In this video, I'm going to give you a ridiculously simple tip that's going to help you to attack short backhands with more consistency. So it's going to mean that when you get that chance in a match, you're way less likely to make a silly mistake. Hopefully you find this video helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you'd give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, much appreciated if you could do that as well. So this is going to help whether you use a one-handed backhand or whether you hit a two-handed backhand. And where this video has come from is I was practicing with a guy this morning. He's a good 4.5 player. He only started playing around four or five years ago, so he's done really well to get to the level that he's playing at at the moment in such a short space of time. But he said to me, yeah, I'm really struggling to put away those short backhands or to attack those short backhands. I'm making too many errors. So I asked him, the most important question that you need to ask someone if they struggle to hit a particular shot. And I said, do you practice it? And he said, no. So because I'm a very helpful person, I made the recommendation that he should actually practice short backhands because everything is specific. If you want to get better at short backhands, you have to work on them. You have to do repetitions. The timing's different. You have to recognize the short ball. You have to move. You have to set up in the right position. And the timing on that shot when you start your swing is very different to rallying in a cross-court backhand or doing the things that players practice uh, more regularly. So you can't expect, whether it's a short forehand, a short backhand, a high put away volley, a high put away volley on the backhand side, these shots that are theoretically simple and are a good opportunity, you can't expect to hit them with consistency if you haven't worked on them. So my simple tip for this video is if you need to improve your short attacking backhands, practice them and there's really a few ways to do that the first one is to hire a coach they can feed you the ball and you can practice getting repetitions the second one is to use a ball machine again practice feeding the ball getting repetitions and the third one is to talk to your practice partners get a basket of balls like i've got here split the cost between you and take it in turns feeding each other shots become each other's coaches just help each other out a lot of tennis players unfortunately are very selfish within their practice but just a little bit of communication between the two of you you can really start to make a big difference in your performance in matches because you'll be able to practice the stuff that you simply can't do when you're doing a cooperative drill so they're the three options that you've got but if you want to get better at something, you have to practice it. You have to get repetitions. Now, something that can be really important for your ability to attack these short balls is recognizing it quickly. I do find that a lot of adult tennis players struggle with ball recognition. If the ball's going deep or the ball's going short, they don't tend to step in as quickly as they need to. And that happens because their visual system basically doesn't work at a high enough level to allow them to read the flight of the ball. The good news though is you can actually train and improve your vision using very simple exercises and by doing that it's going to help you to read the flight of the ball more effectively and to set up in better positions for your shots. So if you'd like to learn more about that I've created a free class that's going to teach you and I'll place a link to it down in the description. Okay hopefully it makes sense what I'm explaining here. If you've got any questions or comments obviously leave them down below. If you found the video helpful give me a thumbs up and I will catch you next time.